Hey guys, Amy Jane here, and I'm here with fellow gun enthusiast, Jack Hill. Today we're gonna break down an AR and clean it for you. For the sake of the camera and the audience looking at it right now, before we uh, disassemble the uh, AR, we're gonna make sure we have a safe direction since we're out here at the range. That's gonna be to your uh, right side as you're looking at me. First thing I wanna make sure is that this uh, gun is, is uh, clear and unloaded. There's no magazine, fire control is on safe. I'm gonna lock that bolt to the rear, push that charging handle forward. I'm gonna visually and physically inspect that gun to make sure that it's unloaded. Once I uh, feel comfortable with that, I'm gonna release the bolt. Ride it forward. We're going to tear it down first by releasing the rear takedown pin. Roll that bolt forward. I'm going to make uh, the weapon is uh, cleared. I'm going to use the rear takedown pin, push it forward, grab it, pull it out. Now I'm going to push out that front takedown pin. And television. There we go. All right, now that we have the upper receiver removed from the lower, I'm going to use gravity in my favor. With the charging handle, I'm going to release it and remove both the bolt carrier group and the charging handle itself. I'll take the bolt carrier group, stick it off to the side. For the charging handle, you come to that sweet spot, you'll see the cutouts in the upper receiver. Lift up and remove the charging handle from it. Now we have all of our components, the upper receiver, lower receiver, our bolt carrier group, and our charging handle. Now we'll continue on. I'm going to take the bolt carrier group apart. The first item is the uh, firing pin, uh, cotter pin. I've removed the firing, uh, firing pin cotter pin from the rear. I'll place it down here to make sure I don't lose items. And as you can see, the firing pin will fall right out at that point. On cue. On cue. <laughs> Next, we have the uh, cam pin. That's going to be a quarter turn to allow the uh, head of it to fit the gas tube here. Sometimes it'll pop out on itself or you just give a little push like that. It'll fall down. Again, I'll place it next to all the other fine parts. Then the bolt itself will be removed. We have the bolt carrier it's, uh, for the uh, bolt, and we'll place them all down here, and now we'll begin the uh, process for cleaning. First part I'm going to start in, I like to, is always with the upper receiver. Uh, one of the first parts I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some solvent down into the chamber itself to help loosen up uh, the uh, carbon that's built up and any of the lighter debris. Let it set for a minute. I will just turn. A little bit, little bit of gravity again. If you have one of the uh, fine like straws that comes to it, it helps to get a, a better aim for it. This one fits almost right into the uh, head of it. And with the fine mist spray, it'll go onto it. I'll let it settle for that. Then I'll get my bore brush. You get the 22 caliber bore brush, which will work on all your 223 or 556 calibers. This one happens to be a JP rod. So we'll use that. Also, we're gonna use the uh, JP uh, chamber guide here. Push that all the way in. What that allows is so there's no excess damage caused by the rough edges of the chamber rod itself. Unlike the rounds that we're putting through it that are smooth and it's just a gas pressure, this scraping of it can uh, damage some of your uh, not real nice match guns or match grade uh, barrels. Maybe I wouldn't do that. Yeah. No. <laughs> not when you're putting that kind of money into it. <laughs> the nice feature with the uh, JP rod or uh, uh, chamber rod. Uh, guide rod is, you'll see the hole right in here. So as I place guide rod into it and get it right to that point, I can squirt the lube in there, continue moving it a little forward. And that way it keeps it more focused once I'm punching that bore. People like to generally punch the bore anywhere from five to 15 times, depending on how many rounds you fired through it that day. Um, that's personal preference and what your time and experience uh, makes you feel you have to at that point. Other options besides the straight guide rod for those, myself personally, I like to use a uh, like an Otis uh, wire chamber brush because it allows me to pull through and only remove debris in the same direction that the rounds are traveling down so that I don't accidentally or uh, unintentionally cause other uh, carbon to be brought back into the uh, to the main area of the locking lug. Once we've done that, punch it a few times, Get the chamber rod again. This one's just a punch. We'll put a patch on it. You do one of two things. If you feel you have enough oil in there and you want to punch, uh, see the debris, just leave it how it is, dry. Punch it through. Pardon me. 
I'll put that right in there. It'll help guide it through. Punch it through the other side. And as you can see, we've got some debris on Filthy. there still. <laughs> and that means we've got a ways to go before uh, this barrel is going to be clean. Ideally, you'd like that patch to come out with absolutely no carbon on it. The last few runs uh, push us through it. I'd put some uh, oil onto it to make sure you keep that barrel nicely lubed. Okay, picking up. We're moving on to the uh, bolt carrier group. The first part, one of the things you can do, you see a lot of dust here and debris. A couple of different products you can use to clean these are like a carb uh, carburetor cleaner. CLP uh, makes a uh, product called Power Blast, which is like a, uh, it's an environmentally safe product that allows uh, almost the same cleaning uh, effect as a carb cleaner without the toxic uh, side effects of it. It'll get all of this dark carbon and uh, removed from the bolt carrier group. You want to blast it and or clean with inside the uh, chambers of it, the gas tube itself, these uh, gas ports that allow for the exhaust. There's also tools you can buy that are specifically made to fit inside and they will scrape the interior to remove any of the excess carbon. And those in conjunction with the other uh, uh, solvents are a, a tremendous assistance in making sure you keep this uh, fouled free. You can also make your own uh, homemade dunk tank by getting some Hoppies number nine and merely uh, using the carburetor cleaner or power blast and removing much of this and then allowing them to soak for uh, an amount of time that you feel comfortable depending again uh, how many rounds you put through that day or how often you're cleaning the bolt carrier group. One of the misnomers people think is that they have to keep their uh, guns clean constantly. Uh, these things gen uh, r get a bad rap, uh, ARs that is, uh, as ha having been finicky and that's normally not the case. I recommend we'll get into it as we put it back together that uh, you, I have uh, fired some ARs that have uh, 60,000 rounds through it and all I've done is clean the bolt carrier and punch the bore and I've touched nothing else and I've never had an issue, a major issue with it other than a simple uh, hard or soft malfunction that you would have in any engagement or any course of fire. So continuing on, once you've sprayed with the solvent, if you don't have any of the other products, you can give a nice coat with the uh, lubrication on it. You can take one of your uh, soft or uh, wire brushes, you're gonna brush through there. Again, on the insides, if you only have the soft bristle brush, put it inside, twist it around, and then you'll use uh, your towels to wipe it down. If you have some smaller ones or some cotton swabs, put them inside of the, uh, the chamber portions and remove the carbon uh, continuously. You can also get some uh, bore brushes that have uh, the softer ends of it, the cotton uh, punch ones run that in there as well. Something that'll cause some good friction that'll fit this gauge or that opening and then allow you to remove all the excess. Again, using it much like you would any of the internal surfaces, a, uh, a brush with some lubricant so that once you remove it, ideally you want no carbon remaining on there. Um, but don't get hung up on that. Again, they, they run pretty reliably if you uh, do keep them well lubricated. Okay. Now we're gonna get the actual bolt, sir, uh, bolt itself. Obviously, Amy's been uh, running this gun hard, and uh, it's the way it's meant to be, and that's when they're happiest, <laughs> as am I. Um, so it's going to require some cleanup. You want to get the, the uh, surface here where it's going to interlock with the, uh, the internal uh, for the feed. The uh, teeth, kind of like a cog in a wheel, where the bolt is going to interface with the uh, locking lug is where you want to concentrate on cleaning it, and as well, since there's a high friction there, uh, lubrication to maintain a uh, good proper wear and so when it's overheating you don't have any se uh, seizing up of the bolt getting running it dry to where like an internal combustion of an engine it's just going to cause problems of the gun's going to run slower and you're going to induce malfunctions by simple lack of proper maintenance and or lubrication. One of the things uh, overlooked that uh, I don't see normally passed on nowadays as I have in the past when it was first brought to my attention, you'll see three gas rings here on the bolt itself. Each one of those gas rings have a, has a small gap in it which allows for it to be removed and or replaced. You want to make sure and inspect those and that not all three of those uh, gaps are lined up together. That will affunk, uh, affect the proper function and overall cyclic, cyclic rate of fire for either fouling or other problems that could uh, be induced. You'll want to make sure that they are not lined up, that they are spaced and just separated randomly uh, around the, uh, the bolt itself. You can use either the pointy end of your uh, 
firing pin to, to uh, manipulate and move it, or one of your wire brushes and just try to find, finite, get it poked in there and just unalign them should they be that way. But take careful notice to uh, pay attention to, this, to these rings, both for overall wear and to check the alignment of it. Second thing is you'll want to take your wire brush and clean around this top surface here where uh, the bolt joins into the gas tube. You'll see a large carbon buildup that normally will acquire there. Some people will use a Dremel. I don't recommend using the Dremel because uh, while it does clean it well, over time it can remove some of the surface of it and overall affect the function uh, and reliability of your bolt itself. There are tools, again, just like for the interior of the bolt carrier that are made to fit over this and will specifically grind it away, but sometimes it just comes down to good old-fashioned elbow work and some good solvent. Once this, uh, the bolt is, is cleaned, we'll go back in. Normally you have a stainless steel tungsten type of uh, firing pin. Should be pretty easy to clean, but around this part, the lip on the firing pin, again, there tends to be a large carbon buildup. You want to check that as well because over time it'll cause the uh, firing pin to stick or uh, other issues where it's not going to seat properly. And once again, you could have a light strike uh, based on the uh, buildup of carbon, which will remove the firing pin in its proper distance. Once that's all cleaned, we can put everything back together. The first step we're going to do, put the bolt back inside the bolt carrier group. You're going to want to line the openings on it. We're going to line the holes up for the cam pin to be dropped in. And as you can see on this one, the cam pin's not necessarily lining up. Easy remedy, remove the cam pin itself, rotate that bolt 180 degrees, and it goes in. Once that cam pin is dropped in, we're going to make a quarter turn. What that allows is it opens up the cam pin to receive the firing pin. You're going to drop that pointy end down, it'll seat in there. I'll rotate on its side, I'll use the firing pin retainer pin, push that in, and now the bolt is together. Next, since we have the charging handle here, and these, uh, I consider these parts paired up, you just want to check the function of the uh, charging handle release. Make sure the springs are all have good tension so that everything's working. Like, like anything, you want to be your own quality control, any unnecessary wear. You're looking at the interior here for a smooth sliding of the gas uh, tube with the charging handle. So you want to make sure it's cleaned in there. You've sprayed some lubricant into it. You're going to brush that area real good again. Use either cotton swabs for this narrow area or the fine part of your rag, clean that off. We're going to clean all the excessive oil and debris off of it, much like we're going to for every other part because this is going to be uh, uh, used and uh, part of the uh, cycling of the uh, uh, firearm itself during uh, during the entire process. The charging handle, like any other part that's going to be used on the guns, uh, will be manipulating once the uh, heat builds up. So the uh, proper care and maintenance and oil for this uh, is necessary for both uh, loading and unloading process uh, of the firearm. So as always, you want to make sure that it is both clean and lubricated and in good functioning condition. We've taken care of the upper receiver. Now we're going to move down to the lower receiver of it. First part some people will uh, negate or not always look at is both the uh, buffer tube and buffer tube spring. To remove it, you'll see the uh, detent pin right there at the top that's holding it in there. You can use your finger or some other object to depress it. And once depressed, the buffer tube and the spring will come out. It'll stick on a little bit. Just pull it and remove it. What you're checking for again is just to make sure that it's clean, free of any uh, fouling or debris. There we go. And just like that, you don't want to have any uh, unnecessary. It should be free to move from it. This one locks on pretty well. Just going to check the spring to make sure you have uh, good uh, spring tension on it. There's no uh, unnecessary bends or anything. We're going to wipe down the buffer tube. There's not a lot to be done there. Inside the, uh, the receiver tube, we're going to be using any sort of cleaning product, whether it be a rag, uh, a bore brush, a punch, whatever, to clean that inside for any excessive oil. We don't need a lot of it, and just to keep it as a dry area. Once that's done, we can put the spring back together with the uh, buffer tube itself. That one locks back on. 
stand it upright, insert the spring into the receiver tube, push it down, and the retainer pin will catch it. And it's self-correcting. Now we're going to move on to the internal components of the lower receiver, the trigger and trigger springs. I'm going to take fire control off of safe, onto fire. In this case, it's going to be semi-auto. I'm going to put my finger on the uh, hammer. I'm going to pull the trigger and I'm going to ride that hammer forward. I don't recommend that you just take fire control off safe, pull the trigger and let that hammer come forward because you could induce a malfunction or uh, you could break the hammer or the springs uh, without the necessary uh, tension uh, or back pressure given that the upper receiver has been removed. Once the hammer's in the forward position, again, like all the other products or all the other cleaning uh, evolutions, you're going to spray a amount of uh, cleaning solution into it. You're going to take your brushes and clean through it, uh, getting the springs, getting the sear faces, and all the internal uh, surfaces of the lower receiver and trigger group and lower parts kit area. Once you've finished your first round of cleaning, if you have fired an ex uh, exorbitant amount of rounds, I recommend you may want to take a brush or a rag and clean some of the excess uh, carbon or uh, oil off of the surface and then again re-lubricate it and allow it to soak for a little bit before you remove it for the final time. Again, you'll want to keep it uh, clean as in any of the other parts. The only internal functions that are occurring are normally with the uh, sear, the hammer itself, and the springs. Once you've conducted the, uh, concluded with the cleaning, those springs are going to require a small amount of oil as well as the face of the sear on the sides and a light coat of oil on the interior of the lower receiver just to maintain uh, or to uh, counter any rust or fouling. Not so much that it attracts debris and or dirt which could induce a stoppage of its own. Now we've concluded cleaning the uh, lower receiver. I'm going to put that hammer back in the cock position. I'll put fire control on safe as always. Now we're ready to reassemble the uh, AR platform. I'm going to start with the uh, upper receiver. Again, I turn it upside down, allow gravity to be my, my uh, friend. I'm going to put the charging handle in again, looking for that group, and drop it and rest it right in there. The bolt carrier group is placed together, however, one key part you want to do for this is give it a downward shake. You heard it click into position, that's going to allow for proper fitting and marrying of the bolt and the locking lug with the charging handle. With the lower receiver, we're going to rock it into position. Make sure that your retaining pins are pulled to the exterior position. I'm going to push the front one in, lock the uh, rear retainer pin in. Now we'll do a function check. Again, point it in a safe direction. Fire control is on safe. I'm going to pull the charging handle to the rear, take off safe. Pull the trigger. I'm going to hold the trigger to the rear, charge it again. I heard trigger reset. Pull the trigger one more time, charge it to the rear, put the fire control on safe. The one feature with the AR, uh, counter to like the HK 416s and those platforms, is unless the uh, weapon is in non firing position, it will not go on safe. So you either have to have the hammer back or hammer forward, anything else, and it's not going to, it normally will not work. Okay, now your, uh, your AR platform's put together. I just want to give you one little uh, extra uh, tidbit of information on some uh, effects to help make these things run well. What I tend to do, or I've done in the past, is I'm going to pull that bolt halfway back, exposing the two gas ports. I will use lubrication. I'll put a, some oil into those two ports. I'll put it onto the bolt face itself, where it interlocks with the locking lug. Then I'll pull the bolt all the way to the rear, turn it horizontal, and drop two, or drop some oil into the back portion of the upper receiver where they're sliding for the friction. Uh, and with that one last secret of the trade, I guess I could say it's, it was passed on to me by better guys who've done a lot more than I've ever done, is I will use a Mobile One Synthetic 5W20 oil. I've used it for both my AR platforms, my handguns, belt feds. If it's good enough for the internal combustion of an engine, it's good enough for these when they're running hot in austere conditions. That was fantastic. Thank you so much, Jack. I really appreciate your time. Pleasure. If you guys didn't get all of that information, you can always hit play, pause, play, pause, play, pause. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.
Well, the gun we're going to be cleaning today, one of Amy's uh, guns that she competes with. This is the Glock 34. I'll take my wire brush. I'll be take care, uh, make sure that I get all the uh, points where frictional uh, is maintained by the slide rails to clean those of any carbon uh, buildup and or foul. Okay, we're done. <laughs>